Warren, we're just sitting down with you for the first time since the news last week uh, that Kraft Heinz put out. Uh, there was so much news, it's hard to even summarize it yeah. all. When they came out with earnings that missed expectations. They said, by the way, it's not going to get better in 2019. They revealed that there's an SEC investigation taking place into accounting. Um, they wrote down the value of the brands by just over $15 billion. Uh, were you surprised by any of this news? What did you think of what happened? Because the street was surprised. So the stock was down over 30%. Yeah. Well, uh, I may have learned a week or 10 days before about something uh, like the SEC investigation. And I'm, not, I'm not on the board, but Greg's on the board, and I talked to Greg. And, and Greg had been talking a lot to the head of the audit committee, and he's a terrific guy, Jack Pope. Uh, but uh, the write-down, uh, I, I do my own write-downs in my mind. Uh, 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 so I, I was not surprised by that, although uh, the accounting firms look at write-downs a little differently than I do, but I would not argue with them on it, and uh, I can give you some math that would substantiate it. Uh, I've been watching. I was wrong in a couple ways on Kraft Heinz, but the, uh, I think we talked the glide luncheon time about the packaged goods uh, brands losing some ground against the retailers. Was always, that just over a year ago? Uh, six months ago. Okay. The, the, the Glide, uh, the, the packaged goods companies are always in a struggle with, with retailers. My, our family had a grocery store for 100 years, and we went through it. then we didn't have much bargaining power. But the really strong brands, uh, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Walmart or uh, Costco or whomever it may be. But the weaker brands uh, are, tend to lose out. Now, the interesting thing about, about Kraft Heinz is it's still a wonderful business in that it uses about $7 billion of tangible assets and earns $6 billion pre-tax on that. So, so on the assets required to run the business, $7 billion, uh, they earn $6 billion uh, roughly after depreciation pre-tax. But we and certain predecessors, but primarily we, we paid $100 billion more than the tangible assets. So for us, it has to earn on $107 billion, not just on the $7 billion that the, the business employs. And, and we don't have a way. It would be wonderful if we had a way to deploy another $7 billion and earn $6 billion, but, but it isn't there. So uh, I, think that, I think that when you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Walmart or a Costco or maybe an Amazon pretty soon. And, uh, and, and you have a, a, a modestly good brand, maybe one where the trend's a little against or something like that. You know, you've got the weaker bargaining hand than you had 10 years ago. The really classic situation is this, if you think about it, Becky. Heinz was started in 1869. Mm -hmm. so they've had all that time to develop various products, particularly ketchup, things like that. The craft part of it's a little more murky, but it goes back to C.W. Post in 1895. Those companies have brought all kinds of brands out, all kinds of, you know them, you had them when you were a kid, you, you have them Raising now, brand, some, some yeah, of them. Sure. They've been distributed worldwide through tens and hundreds of thousands of outlets. They've had hundreds of millions of trying. They spent a fortune on advertising. And their sales now are 26 billion. Costco introduced the Kirkland brand in 1992, 27 years ago, and that brand did 39 billion last year, whereas all the Kraft and Heinz brands did 27, 26 or 7 billion. So here they are, 100 years plus, tons of advertising, built into people's habits and everything else, and now Kirkland, a private label band, comes along and with only 750 or so outlets does 50% more business than all the Kraft Heinz brands. I mean, so house brands, private label, is getting stronger. It's, it varies by country around the world, but, but it's, it's, it's bigger, and it's going to keep getting bigger. Okay, a couple of questions on it. First of all, does that mean you overpaid? Well, we did overpay. We didn't overpay for Kraft. Uh, I mean, for, for, for Heinz. Heinz. That, we bought that originally. It was a 50-50 deal. It's private. 50-50 deal with 3G. Pardon me? With 3G. Yeah, with 3G. We had... Two, two stockholders, and then we we overpaid for we overpaid for Kraft, and and 
we wrote down 15 billion of that, and that, uh, you know, and that, that's the CPA's work, way of looking at it. Actually, the markets marked it down more than that, and, uh, and, and probably quite properly. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the thing to remember is, like, you, know, you know how the stock doesn't know you own it. You pay $10 for a stock, it goes to eight, and you think if it gets back to 10, I'll sell it. You know, if it goes up to 20, you say, I can take out, sell half of it and take all my money out. All those things are nuts. But in, in business, uh, if, if we paid $7 billion for Kraft, which is all it takes to run the business, uh, it would still earn the same amount as if we paid the $100 billion premium. The stock, the business does not earn more just because you pay more for it. And we not only after buying Kraft, everybody started speculating about things we buy, so the prices of everything went up. And then on top of it, we pay large premiums for it. And, and we misjudged it. I hear what you're saying about the house brands and the competition from places like a private label brand that Costco puts out. But what, what about just millennials changing habits? How well, much of it is that younger consumers don't want the brands that their parents and grandparents there, wanted? There, 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 there's some change in habits, but if you think about it, people don't really change their habits that much. If you try to think of the billion dollar brands that have been created in food and their private label is, is there's very few billion dollar brands being created in food. The fellow did it in yogurt probably, you know. I mean, there's, but you don't really see that, that that has not been a huge change. Physical volume hasn't changed much. The ability to price, though, has been changed. And that's huge. We had an analyst on last week, on Friday, talking about what she perceived as the problems with Kraft Heinz. And she said she thinks they're underinvesting in the business. I mean, that's kind of been 3G's way to cut to the bone, and that's how you make make this profitable. But she thinks the brands have been underinvested in. Would you yeah. agree with that? I don't think so, but that's hard for me to tell. Uh, but the I see, well, I was on the board. I mean, I saw lots of innovation on, on different products, and you saw them advertised to some extent. I, I do not think, but I don't know this for sure, but I think if you take the 10 largest food companies. I, I think in, in, in innovation, uh, uh, they've tried a lot of things, but how many things work? If you look at Kellogg and General Mills and go up and down the line, Coca-Cola, I mean, how many new products really become big? Uh, you read about them and all, but, but uh, take Heinz ketchup. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's got 60% of the Ketchup market's got higher percentages in other parts of the world, and uh, it's a very, very, very strong brand. Philadelphia cream cheese is a strong brand, but other brands are weaker. And that you are right, certainly, that in certain categories, maybe in a Kool-Aid or, or uh, you know, Jello or something like that, uh, you know, they go back 75 years or something, and and there's some secular trend against that. But that isn't the key. I mean, they cut costs not in, in innovation or in, in product quality or anything like that. They just took it out of SGNA basically. Now they may, have, they may have made a mistake in terms of working, I shouldn't say they, we may have made a mistake in terms of uh, trying to push hard against certain of the retailers and finding out that we weren't as strong as we thought they were, that we were.